Welcome back to Making a Murderer, and this is our Daily Ma'am Read. We're going to go about it a little bit different today because it's just too blurry, the sound wasn't clear enough, so we're just going to go with screenshots. We're going to do part three, and we're starting with page 21, and we'll finish with page 30. Page 21, Investigator Mark Weger, Calumet County Sheriff's Department. Page 22, Type of Activity. Interview of Daniel S. Morrow, date of activity 110305, reporting officer, investigator Mark Wiegert. On 110305 at 2230 hours, in reviewing Teresa's phone records, it indicates she made a phone call on 103105 at 1131 a.m. to a Green Bay number of 920-405-1998. In checking that phone number in a reverse directory, I found that it belonged to a Daniel S. Morrow in the city of Green Bay. I did make phone contact with Daniel at approximately 22.30 hours. Daniel stated he did receive a phone call from Teresa Holbach. Daniel states she indicated she would be coming to take a picture of his vehicle for Auto Trader magazine. Daniel stated she was supposed to come on today's date, 11.03.05. He states he was not home and does not know if she would have, if she would have shown up to take the picture or not. Daniel could not provide me with any other pertinent information reference Teresa's whereabouts. Investigator Mark Weigert, Calumet County Sheriff's Department. Page 23. Type of Activity Follow-Up. Date of Activity 11.04.05. Reporting Officer Deputy Gary Schultz. On 11.04.05 at 7.30 a.m., I, Deputy Gary Schultz of the Calumet County Sheriff's Department, arrived at work. I spoke briefly with Sheriff Jerry Pagel, who requested that I assist investigators on this complaint. Sheriff Pagel asked that I make contact with the seniors at Hilbert High School to see if any information could be gained, as well as a check of the area in the town of Brilliant due to my familiarity with that area to see if I could locate Teresa's vehicle. Sheriff Pagel also asked that I look into a recently called phone number of 8647110 to see if I could ascertain who that number came back to. I left the Sheriff's Department at approximately 8.20 a.m. and arrived at Hilbert High School at 8.35 a.m. At approximately 8.55 a.m., I spoke with all the seniors at Hilbert High School and advised them we were attempting to locate Teresa. None of the seniors at the high school were able to provide any information. While on my way to the area of County Highway K and County Highway PP, I pulled over to the side of the road and dialed the 864-7110 number. I at the time received the voicemail of a Bradley C. DJ. I left a message for Bradley C., whomever that may be, to contact me as soon as he received this message. After receiving the voice mailbox for Bradley C., I did notify Sheriff Pagel of my findings as to the user of that number. I then searched the area of County Highway K and the area of Joder Road, namely the sand pits located on the north side owned by Dave, Jeanette, and company. I was unable to locate anything. It should be noted prior to leaving the Sheriff's Department, I had the 8647110 number run through our computer system. Dispatch advised it came back to Melissa Schultz, who resides at 8253 County Highway W in Brown County. After checking the area of County Highway K, I drove to that residence to see if I could locate Melissa Schultz. I arrived at the County Highway W address at approximately 9.40 a.m. I spoke with one resident of the address, identified as Rachel Schindler. She indicates she and John Propson live together at that address along with Pete Frank, who lives in the other apartment. In speaking with Rachel, she indicates she doesn't know a Melissa Schultz or a, Ter a Teresa Halbach. Page 24. Rachel thought that John Propson might know Melissa Schultz. I gave her my name and phone number for him to contact me. It should be noted, he did call back in the afternoon and the phone call was forwarded to investigator Mark Wiegert.
After leaving the County Highway W address, I returned to the county by way of Mancal Road. I searched Mancal Road up to Brant Street, John Road in our county. Nothing of interest was found. I then stopped at the Hilbert High School at approximately 11 o'clock a.m. By way of the internet, I searched the 864-7110 number along with Bradley C. DJ. While doing so, I came across a website devoted to Dr. Music DJs. While looking through that website, I did come across the name Bradley C., who gave several email addresses. I subsequently went to Bradley C.'s website. That website was www.bradley.com. While looking through the Bradley C. website, I found a couple of photos showing an adult male, later identified as Bradley Shack, with Teresa Halbach. After finding these websites, I printed these pages and subsequently gave copies of that information to the investigative staff. I also notified Sheriff Pagel of the photos. After returning to the Sheriff's Department and speaking with him and Investigator Dietering, I was advised that Bradley Sheck lived at 6693 Highway 57 Trailer 19 in Greenleaf. I was requested to go to the address to see if I could ascertain if that subject lived there. I arrived at that address at approximately 12.52 p.m. I called dispatch and gave them the license plate numbers of the vehicles located within the driveway, namely 870BFN, 795FRV, and Wisconsin Truck 827369. In speaking with an occupant of the trailer court, I was able to verify that Bradley Shack lived at that address, and this information was also forwarded to Investigator Wiegert. At approximately 2.10 p.m., Investigator Wiegert and Investigator Dietering arrived and approached the residents to conduct their interview. On my way back to the Sheriff's Department, I, gained, I again checked the area of County Highway K and County Highway PP. Traveling east on County Highway K, there was a long field entrance that leads to the south approximately 0.2 of a mile east of County Highway PP. I drove that field entrance as far as I could and did look through the area in an attempt to locate Teresa Halbach's vehicle, which I was unable to locate. Page 25, Gary Schultz, Deputy, County, uh, Calumet County Sheriff's Department. Page 26, Type of Activity, Interview of Andrea L. Vanderwall. Date of activity, 11.04.05 at 8.45 a.m. Reporting, Officer, Investigator Mark Wieger. On 11.04.05 at 8.45 a.m., I, Investigator Mark Wieger of the Calumet County Sheriff's Department, received a phone call from Andrea L. Vanderwall. Andrea stated she was wondering if we needed any help with finding her friend, Teresa Halbach. Andrea states she has been a friend with Teresa since college. She said the last time she saw Teresa was on 10-1805. Andrea stated Teresa is a very stable person, very family-oriented, and she does not believe that Teresa would have a boyfriend. I ask Andrea where Teresa would hang out at, and she states Teresa does go to a lot of country bars because of the area she lives in near Hilbert. Andrea did indicate to me that Teresa had not been going out as much as of late because she has been very busy. And Andrea, Andrea states when they go out in Green Bay, Teresa very rarely would stay at somebody's house because she would want she would make the comment that she likes to sleep in her own bed. That is all the information that Andrea could provide for me. Investigator Mark Wiegert, Calumet County Sheriff's Department. Page 27. Type of Activity. Contact with Chase Bank regarding Teresa Halbach's credit card activity. Date of Activity 110405. Reporting Officer Investigator John Dietering. Documents generated none. On Friday 110405 at 0800. 45 hours, I, Dietering, did contact Chase Bank regarding Teresa Halbach's credit card number 4266-8410-2863-1230. The purpose of my call was to determine whether there had been any activity on this card on this on this credit card since 103105. 
I was informed by the representative of Chase Bank that the last activity on this card was Friday, 10-28-05. Charges were made to a Papa's, Papa Murphy's Pizza in Appleton and a Walmart in Appleton. The, the individual I spoke with was unable to provide me with any information regarding addresses for either business place. At 0900 hours, I did contact Bank One which had been bought out by Chase regarding a second credit card, that being 4266812134237139. The representative advised me that this card did not appear to be activated. The representative then advised me that they had a second card listed for Teresa Habach, that being 5369935470023459. The representative advised me that this is a MasterCard, which had a 1,000 line of credit, and that there are $246 available on this account. The representative advised me that the last activity on this particular MasterCard was on Saturday, 10-29-05, and it was used at an Exxon fuel station in De Pere, Wisconsin. A $38.06 charge was posted on this account. The individual who I spoke with indicated that Bank One was going to be flagging both accounts, the account ending on 1230 as well as the account ending in 3459 for activity. They indicated in the event any transactions were made that they would contact us. I had received a credit card information regarding credit card numbers regarding card numbers from Investigator Weger, who had obtained a large file of records from Teresa Halbach's residence on Thursday, 11.305, investigation continues. Page 28, John Dietering, Investigator, Calumet County Sheriff's Department. Page 29, Type of Activity, Interview of Carrie M. Hoops. Date of Activity, 11.0405 at 9.15 a.m. Reporting Officer, Investigator Mark Wiegert. On 11.0405 at approximately 9.15 a.m., I, Investigator Mark Wieger of the Calumet County Sheriff's Department, did receive a phone call from a female identifying herself as Carrie M. Hoops from the city of De Pere. Carrie was calling to offer her assistance in the attempt to locate her friend, Teresa Habach. Carrie stated to me she has not talked to Teresa in approximately a month because Teresa had moved out of the apartment in the Green Bay area and back to her home town. Carrie could, Carrie could tell me that Teresa was a very stable, outgoing, and friendly person. Carrie stated Teresa was coaching girls volleyball. Carrie did not know of any boyfriends that Teresa would have had. Carrie did state Teresa was a very likable person, and this would be very out of character for her not to have any contact with her family or friends. Investigative Mark Wieger, Calumet County Sheriff's Department. Page 30. Type of activity. Contact with Lincoln High School, Manitowoc, Wisconsin. Date of activity, 11.0405. Reporting Officer, Investigator John Dietering. Documents gathered, none. On Friday, 11.0405, at 0935 hours, I did make contact with Lincoln High School, Manitowoc, Wisconsin, regarding Jason Zipper's attendance on 10.31.05. I was transferred to the school resource officer, Bruce J Jacobs, and was transferred to a voice mailbox. I left a message for Mr. Jacobs indicating my questions my question about Mr. Zipper's attendance. I subsequently received a call from Officer Jacobs indicating Jason Zipper had in fact been at school all day both morning and afternoon on 10:31:05. Investigation continues. John Dietering, Investigator, Calumet County Sheriff's Department. All right, guys, that concludes our Daily Ma'am read, and we made it through 30 of the 1,116-page documents. But in that, if you look at this, I, I left it on the screen here. Remember, we were talking about Jason Zipper in the, in the last couple reads, and he claimed that he was home all day on the 31st, and he did not see an Auto Trader girl. Now, here's a big question for you guys. Jason was at school all day, morning, 
and afternoon. All day. He has an airtight alibi. What better alibi <clears throat> excuse me, than being at school? Every single hour your your attendance is noted. So there that's an airtight alibi. Now we're talking a missing girl. So why would he throw away his alibi to say he was home all day? What why would he change that why would he lie? This is the biggest question. And that doesn't make a lot of sense to me personally as to why you would throw away an alibi, especially when it, it, it does it have weight in this? Is there something we're missing here? So I want to thank you guys for joining us. Um, I'm sure you're going to bring up a lot of important facts as well. And I appreciate that very much. As we dig into this more and more, we start seeing the discrepancies even more so in the case. So thank you guys so much. Yes, we have a lot of uh, wonderful things in the works. We've got the library expansion. We've got Remaking a murder video coming out. We have a huge surprise on Friday. So I want to thank you guys so much for joining me tonight. And I think it's time. So let's say it together. If you didn't do the crime, you shouldn't do the time. Thank you so much and have a very great night.